<clears throat> My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. Today we're going to continue our discussion on inflation. This is campaign season, and you're going to hear it from the candidates. You're going to hear it on commercials. You're going to hear it from all of your friends on Facebook. Unfortunately, most of the information you hear is going to be incorrect, or they're going to be slanting it in one direction. So let's talk about this a little bit more. And I'm going to do a few more shows on this because it can get complicated. So I want to take these shows and use just little splices of it. So what is inflation? Inflation is a general increase in prices and a corresponding fall in the purchasing power of money. So what's an easier way to say this? Inflation happens when there's too much money or better said, there's too much money being spent and it's chasing too few of goods. We can look at this as a version of supply and demand. Now, how does this happen? This happens a few different ways and let's just touch on a few of them here for today. So number one, every economist would agree that if the government prints too much money, there's a surplus of money and again, there's going to be too much money chasing too few goods. That can cause inflation. The other thing that can cause inflation is, is when there is supply chain problems. And number three, which is what you probably see more often than not, is a combination of a very strong economy coupled with greed. So let's go over these. The government printing money. Now, when did the big inflation spike happen because it was at 9.1%. And most economists, probably all economists, would say that a president wasn't at fault for this. This was COVID. So COVID caused a lot of issues here. So people weren't working. There was, you couldn't get any goods and services. So what happens during the lockdown? Well, people need money. And so because of that, the government, through the CARES Act, did give out money. Now, you could blame somebody for giving out a stimulus check, which I notice a lot of people do. And the interesting thing here is, is that there were three stimulus checks given out, two of them by Donald Trump, one of them by Joe Biden. So if you're going to say that that's the cause of the problem, actually, it's two to one there. But I don't think that's the actual cause of the problem because it, something could have happened that was much worse because most economists would agree that although those stimulus checks would increase the inflation rate, what would be worse is if people couldn't buy food. What would be worse is if people couldn't afford their mortgages or their rents. So it was this catch 22. So it had to be done, even though that there was going to be some type of consequence. So now three or four years later, everybody on the campaign trail on one side, i.e. Republicans are going to say, oh my God, this inflation happened and let's blame the president. You would have blamed the president even more if everybody had lost their job, nobody could pay for anything and nobody who was able to afford food or water. So let's just be honest here. Let's not be partisan. Let's be Americans. It's a big difference. So the government gave out money. Again, three stimulus checks, but that's not the end of it. What also happened was that they were giving out about $600 a week for people who couldn't work. On top of that, in addition, with their apartments, <laughs> They could get away with, I believe it was 150 days or so of not paying their rent. And then what would happen is they had an extra 30 days for their landlord to have to message them and tell them and blah, blah, blah. And so they had literally about six months where they didn't have to pay rent on top of that. And so there has been plenty of stories, and I know people like this who they rent out apartments and whatever, they rent out houses. They would go there to collect money and they would say, we don't have any money. And yet they would look inside the house and they would see a brand new big screen TV. <laughs> so there was also behavioral challenges here that people weren't spending their money correctly. So we have a lot of people getting a lot of money 
Now, could they spend it as much as they wanted wherever they wanted? No, because most things were closed. You couldn't do anything. So they're building up their cash, and yet there's nowhere to spend their money. So does this create inflation? Absolutely it does. Also included with the CARES Act is that if you had a student loan, you didn't have to pay your student loan off. So I believe, because I had a student loan at that time, I believe it was about three years that you were given a break. So in my case, and my case is not that unusual, I had to pay $600 a month. But during that time, I didn't have to pay anything. So if I was a person who was an instant gratification type of person, that I had an extra $600 and I was gonna spend it somewhere, there you go, it becomes too much money being spent on things. And, but I personally didn't do that because I'm mature, right? There's a difference. You don't just spend it because you have it, because you know that at some point you're going to have to pay off that loan. So the smart thing is to do is to keep that $600 per month because you know it's going for that student loan to put it to the side. And a lot of people did not do that. And of course that causes inflation. So those are all the things that the government did to give people money to help them out. Again, does it cause inflation? Yes. Should we whine and cry about it? Probably not because it was necessary to do that. So let's talk about the other thing here that also causes inflation. Supply chain problems or that they're not working. So what does that mean? It means that most of our products in the United States come from China. They had a full lockdown. So there's even car parts that need to be put in cars that are sold in America. You can't do that. So what happens is, is that there is such a decrease in the amount of cars that are being produced in the United States. So there's gonna be a shortage. There's a shortage of food. There's a shortage of services because people aren't working. Even professionals, um, what they would be called essential workers, a lot of them, doctors and nurses, they didn't wanna be in the line of fire of getting sick or dying because of COVID. A lot of them stayed home, a lot of them quit, a lot of them retired. So there were problems everywhere. Again, can you blame the president for a virus? No, you cannot. Can you blame these problems with the supply chains on a president? Not really, because if people aren't going to work, these things aren't going to get done. And there was a real good reason for people not working. Um, I remember here that there was a shortage on toilet paper and everything else. Why? Because truckers aren't working either. And they can't truck all of the stuff that they need to the different stores. So yes, that's going to cause a problem. There's gonna be shipping backlogs. Again, uh, product shortages, you name it. So I think I described that well enough and we can all agree whether you are a liberal or conservative that that's an actual problem. Number three, let's talk about the other one that people don't really want to talk about. Inflation, most of the time, is caused by a very strong economy. So that's why Republicans don't want to talk about it. Because let's say you go to Las Vegas, even now. Oh, let me tell you what it's like here. A couple of weeks ago, right? Let's say you want to go to see a concert. You just want to have a night out. And you just want to see, not the Rolling Stones or somebody super big and popular and famous. Let's say you want to go down the street to go see Rick Springfield, right? The guy has one hit song, Jesse's Girl. Great, one song. Go there to that concert place to see that. Uh, at the Pearl, I'll tell you where it is. Sold out. You can't get a ticket for under like $200 to see <laughs> Rick Springfield. <laughs> Again, why is it inflation? Too much money chasing too few goods. That means that Rick Springfield is still selling out concert halls. And there's so much money in Las Vegas chasing that, that these prices are getting incredibly high. And when you go to casinos here now, you gotta pay $40 for parking on top of all that. And none of this exorbitant, exorbitant prices are slowing anybody down from going anywhere in Las Vegas. So what does that mean? It means that the prices are going to continue to rise. It's going to be, again, a general increase in prices. And the purchasing power of your money goes down. 
a long time ago, you could spend maybe $100 for a concert ticket and get front row for a very good artist. Now, you've got to pay hundreds of dollars just to get your back up against the back wall in a concert hall for a guy who has one hit song. I think last week, Christopher Cross played here. Same problem. Tickets are like two, $300 to go see a guy that's got, I don't know, the song Sailing? I think he's got and maybe one other hit song. And he, from the 80s? <laughs> 40 years ago, he had two hit songs and he's selling out in Las Vegas and the prices are extremely expensive. Conti you will continue to see prices rise in this because people are paying these prices. Too much money, the economy is too good. What we also get good at is complaining that the economy sucks. And yet every time, everywhere you wanna go somewhere in Las Vegas, everything is sold out. You wanna to go to a good restaurant, you, you better make reservations because you're gonna be waiting 45 minutes to an hour or longer to get a seat. Why, because there's no money around? No, it's because people have too much money and they're spending too much money. Now, it could be this American dream type of thing, which is true that we're gonna talk about it on another show. But people are using too much money, they're spending it and they're putting it on their credit card and they owe all this. Again, is this a president problem? No, it's an American populist problem that doesn't know how to do the right thing. They want instant gratification and they overspend on things. And with the corporate greed side of it, they're gonna keep charging and charging as much money as possible until people stop going. So let me give you another example of this because when we say corporate greed, a lot of people just push that off and say, well, that's nothing. People should be able to charge as much as they should or as much as they could. Okay, let's see if we totally believe this. For example, I'm a marriage and family therapist. I charge about $150 an hour, which is about the going rate. I have about 150 people on my waiting list. Now, the conservative Republicans that I know will smile big and say, wow, you could charge whatever you want now because you have so many people on your waiting list, you don't need that many. You need like much less than that. So you should raise your prices and see who falls off your list and who stays on your list and you'll make a lot of money. So technically, I could probably start charging about $1,000 an hour and, and see who will stu still do therapy with me. But is that ethical? Well. If you're a conservative, you'll say, who cares, right? Like, <laughs> if you charge it and you get it, no big deal. But I would also say that if you're on Medicaid, you get free services. And if you're rich, you can afford to pay very high prices. But what am I doing? I'm pricing out the whole middle class. The middle class is the backbone of this country. Why would I do such a thing? Again, because I'm not a person who wants to sit there and be super greedy. I will do my job as best I can and charge a, a price that works for most people or is in line with the other professionals such as myself. I have no need to double, triple, quadruple my prices just because I have clients on a waiting list. Now you take this with other big corporations and they know that there's a big demand for something and what they'll do is they'll rise the, raise the prices as much as possible. Is this ethical? And I said this on the last show. Economics isn't just money and dollars and numbers. It's also about morality. And we also lack a lot of morality in the United States, which is causing some of this problem. So not to make this show too long, but what, one of the things that you're going to see on Facebook and all these social media things and in Donald, Donald Trump's speeches and all his commercials, I'm just going to talk about two things today really quick because they're easy to debunk. So I had to write this down because it's actually laughable. He was bragging how he made gas prices low and it doesn't matter what the number was, but it, it, it's lower than it is today. So he said the gas prices were lower when he was president, that's number one. So let's talk about that. It's supply and demand. The number that he was saying that was low, it was low. He's not lying, the number was low. But anybody with half a brain or knows anything about economics would tell you that the number that he's using that was low was right in the middle of the lockdown 
during the COVID pandemic. And so what does that mean? It means that nobody was driving, nobody was going to work. Truckers weren't going anywhere, really. Nobody was flying an airplane. Nobody was going on vacation. So nobody was going to gas stations. So what happens when nobody's going to the gas station? The prices get lower. Listen, please use your brain, right? He didn't do anything for that to happen technically, right? He may have done something, but I'll talk about that in a second. So basically what you're saying here is the economy was dead. The economy was flat on its back. The economy was being held up by government payments. It was life support that the government was doing by infusing cash to people because nobody was working. And so Donald Trump's gonna say, yay for me, gas prices were low. Yeah, but the economy was dead, and that's why it was low. The other thing he talked about is that interest rates were also low. But interest rates are low to help people to spend money. And when does this happen? It happens when the economy is flat on its back. So when the economy sucks, interest rates come down to entice people to spend. So when somebody says, oh my God, the interest rates are so high, that's terrible. It is terrible depending on what you wanna do. If you're trying to Let's say you, you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, unless you're buying it in cash, you got problems because the interest rates are high. And so that's going to be an issue. But the reason why interest rates are high is because the government is basically trying to pump the brakes on the economy because it's moving too well. It's too successful. And when it's too successful, you have too much people, like I said before, too many people spending too much money. And what happens is, is that the prices are keep, they'll keep going up pretty much everywhere else. If you come to me for therapy, I'm not gonna raise your price because I'm so successful. Other people do that, right? Like, <laughs> like if you wanna go see Rick Springfield. So to sum this up really quick, Donald Trump can brag about interest, be, interest rates being low when he was in office, but that is because the interest rates were very low because the economy sucked. And gas prices were low because nobody was driving anywhere because the economy was dead. And as everything increases, the government's gonna be putting on its brakes to be able to, to stop that from happening. So let me just finish it right there. Uh, it's about 17 minutes or so, and we'll be doing some more shows on this. So hopefully you found that entertaining or valuable in some way. My name is Joe Prony. This is the Rise Above Project. Thank you.